I wasn't given any advice. Uh, I wasn't even aware of writers during most of my life until I came to New York at the age of 21 um, after college. <clears throat> what made me a writer is what made me curious. And what made me curious was being a, a, an American that wasn't sure how American I was. I think this is true of a lot of foreign, people who have foreign parents. And um, my mother and father ran a store in the southern part of New Jersey where I was born. The town is called Ocean City. I was born in 1932. When I was 10 years old, the war, World War II, was very much being um, enacted through the European theater. And the part of Italy that my parents come from, which is the southern part, was being attacked by Allied forces, Americans and Canadians and British, moving up through the areas that were the centers of my ancestry. Uh, though I was born in, in New Jersey, as I said before, I was 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old during that 1942, 43, 44 period. And the only thing I remember that made me a writer <clears throat> and the curiosity that is necessary, I think, for being the kind of writer I am, a nonfiction writer, was that as a boy in the store, I would see my parents react during the daytime in one manner as they, had, as they dealt with customers. My mother spoke English very well. My father spoke English with an accent, and he worked in the back of the store, and my mother worked in the front of the store selling dresses. And what started me thinking about other people was when I overheard conversations between my mother and her customers. And I came very curious about the women and their stories. My listening to the stories as women on one end of the counter would talk across the counter to my mother in those leisurely afternoons while browsing through the, the clothing racks, picking fabric or picking dresses to try on, they would be talking about things. And the things that they'd be talking about weren't necessarily um, of, any, of any significance in a social or historical sense, but they were revealing of personal moods, personal feelings. And during the war, there was references to the war, to, to the rationing of, of food, to the, to, to the lack of gasoline during, during that period. <clears throat> to the fear of their, of their sons or maybe daughters in the military service or their uncles or fathers working in defense plants late at night in, in, in faraway Philadelphia, which is 50 miles away. And so as a boy, I was hearing references to the war while being remote from the war. And at the same time, I was intimately involved with the, with the enemy of, in the war, the, the Italians, who of course were allied with the Germans because my father's three brothers were in the Italian army. Now you say, what does this have to do with being a writer? What this has to do with being a writer is this. At a young age, I would eavesdrop in the store and hear stories of American women talking about their lives. The kind of material that might make for fiction writers the, 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 the essence of fiction, private life. At night, I would hear in our apartment above the store Stores closed at 7 o'clock, 6.30. I would hear my father, who wasn't very vocal during the day, talking very much about his fear of his brother's welfare and the village itself where his mother, his widowed mother, lived. And I was getting, at this young age, a sense of story and how in this little building with the store on the first floor and the apartment on the second floor, the emergence of characters and the changing personality between the day and the night the father who was reticent during the day, no doubt interiorly very defensive and possibly insecure in a sense of being pro-American. And at night, more outspoken because there weren't any customers that he had to worry about being overheard, what he was saying. I was just interested in a story here. Now, what was the story? The story is no story in a way, but it's a full, full story of character uh, uh, inquiry, uh, promoting my curiosity. Patience, the most important thing, as you perhaps in the beginning, is definitely curiosity. The ability to be outside yourself, to see other people and wonder, wonder who are they? How are they different from me? How do they get through the day and night? What motivates them? Where do they come from? Where do their parents come from? All this curiosity about people. Next thing is to get to bridge the, the ignorance gap 
and get to talk to these people. Uh, I have that. I, that again comes out of the store. Anybody in your audience who, was, who had parents who had a store, kids who hang around stores because their parents are the proprietors or because the kids have a job in a store, learn at an early age to deal with people of many different ages. As a kid, I would see older people coming into the store. I would hear them talk. I would watch the way that they moved, what they dressed, how they looked, how they comported themselves. So I'm dealing with different age groups. Also in stores, you have to have good manners. That's another thing I picked up very quickly, and it helps in journalism, I think. Good manners, store manners. You always have to be respectful toward the customer. My parents certainly, that was a mandate in, in their little business that I certainly followed. Uh, what you need as well as curiosity and being able to engage people and be polite and presentable and therefore make yourself uh, uh, acceptable to strangers in the beginning. You have to have patience. Many journalists, many writers, many curious people are curious but not patient enough in, in taking the time, properly the amount of time, not pushing it, to patiently, patiently uh, 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 Court the people that they want that the writer wants to know about that I in this case would want to know about. I'm not I'm never in a rush. I take very long, very long time in my research, and it does never is 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 interrupted with note taking and tape recording. I never do any of that. What I do is try to introduce myself most most deferentially to people I'm curious about. I I tell them with sincerity that I'm interested in them and why. And I am sincerely interested in these people because they represent to me something I believe is an enlargement of my life. These people are different from me. I am interested in de describing the difference. I'm also interested in bringing to fore, to the print, to the printed page, their stories. Why? Because I'm searching for material. The material I, I, I search is reality, real people. But I'm most particularly people who are not making the news, people who are not well known. Uh, I've always wanted to be uh, writing about people that the reader perhaps heard about for the first time because I wrote about them. I was very different myself. And I think that a writer, many writers, whether you're talking about the great fiction writers, Philip Roth, or, or the late John Updike, or the late William Styron, I mean, they very much present Something of the, of the uh, in the case of Roth particularly, the outsider. Um, and I was in the world of nonfiction very much in the persona of the outsider, from that boy in the store to the boy at Alabama. And I'd write little stories for the college newspaper as I'd written little stories I didn't mention in the, high, in the uh, town weekly, the New Jersey town weekly. I would write school news. I'd write about my fellow students in, in, in grade school and high school and later on when I was at college, the same. And I wasn't writing fiction. I wanted to write nonfiction because I thought that there wasn't much difference between fiction and nonfiction, except in fiction, you imagined stories and you changed the names of living people that might have inspired the stories. In nonfiction, and nonfiction, which I wanted to do and did do and do do, I thought, I want to write stories, but I don't want to change the names. That's the big difference between what I do and a fiction writer does. And maybe a big difference between the nonfiction that I, I uh, advocate and advance and personify from the nonfiction that is strictly journalism. It isn't journalism, what I'm doing. It is stories about real people and real names. I insist on real names. I never make up information. What I do is spend an inordinate amount of time with the people I write about. But my ambition is to try to describe realistically the life of people, particularly private people, ordinary people, the sort of people who went to my mother's dress shop when I was a boy observing and eavesdropping. I was really motivated then, as I still am now at the age of 77, to write about people that you might not have ever heard of, but perhaps through my efforts as a writer, my descriptive efforts, my, my ambitions as a, as a writer of scenes and visual writing, you will see them, and you will see them, and you will understand them, and you will get a, a sense of the people that it took me a long time to know, but now I want to communicate them to you. And that's really what I do.